to the Z channel. Uh, so today's topic is going to be uh, about security. So I'm making another Z security tips and politics tape. And I really want to touch base on a couple of things that have been. Um, I just want to say that like, it's mostly kind of bugging me, you know, versus anything. And and so, you know, when when you work in a tight market of other security companies and you you know you you, you go through um, employees and you have people that you know trade you know that they, they, they go to different uh, they go to different companies and a lot of people like you know we network with each other heavily over social media and we uh, you know there, there, there's a lot of bonds and friendships that get made when you're you know partnering with people and so the video today is kind of more about the ethics and instead of the politics it's more about the ethics okay so you know if if you've decided to go and work for another company that's all fair and good you know that's why it's a you know a, a, a open market economy where you can pick and choose where you want to work and you know that that, that, that that's what's great about America so you know that being said if you're you know going to another company and you have made that decision that you know this is no longer the best place for you you know th that's fine but don't try to sabotage the place that wants to care you and so that is what today's uh, video is about you know what I I've known a lot of people that are in the industry that you know they'll they'll, they'll leave and then they'll try to recruit everyone from other places and try to make their place better because you know that's obviously a smart move but in my opinion it's underhanded it, it's 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 dirty it's sneaky it, it really makes you you know just that type of underhanded person that people don't respect and so if if you're going to you know try to sabotage another company then I would have to say that the gloves are going to be off and you know we're we're going to outdo you you know if 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 you think for one second that the group of guys that are working their butts off are, you know, going to going to uh, change, you know, their work ethic or or uh, stop, you know, delivering a brand of service that, in my opinion, is better than everyone else's, you know, uh, you're gonna fail. And so, for you to try to branch out and and take our people, I, I have an issue with that, and. You know, at the end of the day, if someone wants to leave, that's that's their you know choice, and and I respect their decision if they, you know, want to leave. But it's been my experience that a lot of the times, you know, we, we keep getting people that that call our, our people and trying to recruit them, and it's like, you know, develop your own team. And if you can't do that, then you shouldn't be in the industry. Or if you're not happy with the team that you currently have, make them better. You know, it, it's all about training. It's all about what you're going to put into your team and and how you uh, you know how you run your place if you're not given the best training if you're not given you know positive and quality uh, feedback and constructive criticism and making it a you know a, a place that's worth working for you know then what are you doing you know um, so I, I, and I'm not I'm definitely not gonna name any names or anything like that but those in the know and that are also in the security industry, you know, across America, you, you know what I'm getting at when I went with what I'm talking about. It's it's just underhanded, and in my opinion, it's it's unprofessional. There's there's no there's no room or or a place for people that are going to you know try to subvert other people's hard work. And so that is for for me the the biggest the biggest issue that you know a lot of security companies face I believe is uh, when they you know lose an employee to another company all of a sudden you know that person's trying to recruit other people or you know the you know sometimes you have key players that leave and then they try to make it seem like now that they're gone the place is gonna fall apart and you know I, I'm here to tell you it's not gonna fall apart you're replaceable I'm replaceable everyone's replaceable like you could be fired the next day and guess what the place is gonna keep running with or without you okay like 
everyone says, oh, this place isn't going to be anything without me. And, you know, I, I've seen it a, a, a couple hundred times, you know, where, where people come and go and, and we're still we're still running. And, you know, f for me in that aspect, any place I go to, I'm going to be an asset, you know. So that's the way I look at it for me. And what I bring to the table is what I bring to the table. You know, that's why I've never, you know, claimed a rank or, you know, lorded title over anyone because, you know, I don't need to do that. Um, you know, I, I, I know that, that I, I manage by example and that I, I do my best to take care of my team and the company and the clients. And so, you know, if, if you're not marketing yourself that way as an employee towards your employers and your fellow teammates, then shame on you. Uh, you know, there's, there's no room for mediocrity in this industry. And as unforgiving as it already is, you know, you, you're not going to get any kind of slack from us if you're out there and you're doing a half-assed job making us look bad. You know, there, there's a lot of security companies, you know, in, in this city alone, and I'm not going to name their names just because I don't want to get in trouble for, for slandering or, you know, whatever. But, the, you know, they do a mediocre job, and that's why they don't have the same kind of reputation that we do, you know. And if you look us up, well, like I said, I can't name names, but... If, if, if you were in the know and you know who we are and you know what we're about, everyone out there does their very best. And, you know, yeah, we have our issues, but what company doesn't? And with the, uh, with the uh, flow of people that have come and gone, you know, I, I would say that the core group of people that have stayed there are there because they know how to do their job, they care about their job, they're professional at their job, and that's what separates them from the other people. That's where it separates them from, you know, staying with us for many years versus going to someplace else. And it's, in my opinion, the security industry is going to, you know, it's never going to go away. It's going to keep growing. Um, the uh, pay rates are definitely going to keep going up. You know, the, the, the demand for security is never going to stop. As long as there's people that are going to break the law and cause problems and, you know, can't live peacefully among other people, you know, the, the, there's a lot of crazy places. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop a name, and it's uh, completely uh, different from, you know, anyone that works in this uh, city or state. Uh, but uh, Darian Long, I believe his name is, the security guard that is famous for tasering the uh, unruly woman in Atlanta, uh, like she basically attacked him in front of, you know, his uh, or, or her kids, uh, because he told you know her kids to basically be quiet because they were being a bunch of loudmouth, you know, bratty kids. Like and that's what that's the truth of the situation. And he asked them, you know, he said, hey, you know, be quiet. And they all wanted to get ratchet crazy on him and started getting in his face. And then she started hitting him, and so he tased her, and that's how he got famous. But I watched probably almost every video that that guy has and let me tell you something he dealt with a lot of crap in Atlanta and in Detroit and that guy has always stood his ground and so I, I give mad respect to Darian Long and you know if if uh, if more security guards would take a stance the same way that he does and, and I know sometimes he kind of goes out, outside of policy um, but he's also dealing with, with, the, with a lot of unruly people and so that's why I'm using him as an example is, you know, if you're going to get into the security industry, you need to know how to deal with difficult, stupid, ignorant people. And I mean stupid and ignorant together because that's what they are, stupid and ignorant, all at the same time when they don't want to comply with laws and or, or, or community policies. I mean, you know, it's designed so it's a peaceful living situation. And, it, you know, it's bad enough having to live next door to a lot of people anyway, uh, just because of the, you know, the, the congestion. Some people like to live in apartment complexes and, and, you know, residential, you know, housing communities, you know, that's all well and good. But if you're going to live there, you know, don't be a pain in the butt to other people. Because if you are, people like me are going to come knock on your door and tell you to shut the music down, to be quiet. You know, we're, we're going to affect situations that are going to probably get you evicted out of your place or, or whatever, you know, so... Um, for for the for the for the type of industry that we're in, there's there's got to be a fine line where you have to make a choice on what kind of a person you're going to be, what kind of a professional you're going to be, how you're going to do your patrols, 
and how you're going to interact with your team, with your with your uh, fellow employees. You know, um, I, I I think that there's a lot of dwelling on the things that go wrong versus the things that go right, and I, I think that's just a way to kind of keep the countermeasure of quality and reassurance that everyone's always walking on eggshells and, and in a way you have to walk on eggshells in this industry because you can never be complacent or you know think that it's just going to be another routine day i mean ask any police officer and i'm not comparing police work to security work because you know while there's similar or while there's similarities there's a night and day differences for sure and you know ask any police officer no traffic stop is routine you know no investigation is routine um, same with same with us, you know. No, uh, no call for security is ever going to be a routine call for security. You never know what you're going to run into, who you're going to run into, what weapons they might have, what the situation you might be facing. You know, uh, I've dealt with crazy situations myself. I mean, to the point where you know people almost died. People had to be, you know, get transferred uh, or transported by the ambulance. I've I've dealt with drug addicts, gang bangers. Um, you know, just crazy people. I've had people bomb through it. Uh, um, I mean, good grief. There's there's a lot of bad, you know, idiotic people, and that's the reason for security. You know, there we had a, a one situation where a guy wanted to shoot up the office, and it was all because he was being told, you know, he wasn't following community policies, and he was being an, an unruly, you know, person. And so it's like, hey, you cannot act this way. You can't threaten people with a gun. You can't do this stuff. It's illegal. And, you know, going back to the law enforcement part, and not to get too into detail, but why this guy didn't get arrested in the first place is beyond me. He should have been handcuffed, taken to jail, and then some. I mean, you know, well, I'm not going to get into the politics of that. Um, you know, I have my opinions on some certain things. I'm going to leave it at that. But when you're called to go handle crazy people, it, it makes a difference on, you know, how you... Uh, how you handle situations, you know, and, and a lot of this stuff can be nerve wracking, especially when people are not being compliant. I mean, you, you get the people that act like they're entitled and, and, oh, I'm going to do whatever I want. You can't stop me from being me and blah, 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 blah. And what you going to do about a mock cop? And, you know, I, I've, I've heard all of the stereotypes, name calling that security guards can get. And I laugh in people's faces about it. I let them know straight up what's going on. You know, uh, I, I tell them right now, like, you know, you know, they'll call me a name. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I'll be that. I'm not here to impress you or be tough. I'm here to win. And I'm going to do what I have to do to affect my job. So if you're going to be a pain in my butt, guess what? This is going to get escalated to the point where you're going to probably lose. You're going to lose and you're probably going to get evicted or you're going to get arrested. And I've seen it happen countless times over and over where people think that they know something better or, you know, that, that they're going to win in this situation and they don't. You know, does that mean that I'm always right in what I do or that every other security guard's right in what they do? Probably not. I've been wrong a few times on my own uh, situations, but you live and you learn. And, you know, that's just the progression in this in this career and industry is you have to have enough repetitions under your belt dealing with certain people to be a better security guard, to be a better security professional, uh, bodyguard, wh whatever you're into, you know. If, if the world was to you know, go upside down on itself, security is going to be the number one thing in the world and, and, and how you secure your family, your friends, uh, you know, the, the people you care about, it's all going to be based on what you know and can do in the field now. You know, um, learn tactical patrol tips, learn how to investigate situations, know how to multitask, know about misdirection, know about messing with people's minds if you have to. Human intelligence is probably one of the most uh, misunderstood things ever. If you know how to read people, if you know how to listen and, and, and get to the bottom of problems, you're going to be that much more effective in the field and you're going to be able to be, in my opinion, one of the elite security professionals you know, out there. And you can pretty much write your ticket for any company you want to work for as long as you're going to be willing to put in the effort and, 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 and keep a, a, a strong work ethic. I mean, you you can't ever take your foot off the gas in the security industry. You've always got to keep your foot on the gas. I'm not saying you need to have it floored, but you always got to be going. And you got to make it to the point where it's it's safe for you, it's safe for the people you work with, the residents, um, whatever uh, customers you might be protecting. You know, you could be in front of a bank, you could be in front of a commercial building, you could be guarding a construction site, 
you know, there there's so many different uh, security, you know, details out there that <clears throat> you can market yourself to do any of them as long as you have the work ethic and then the proof that you can deal with people. And that's what the bottom line is, you know, getting into the ethics of things. And so going back to my, my original point with the people that are trying to be underhanded and, and, and snake other other people from, you know, their companies or, or for the, the new company that they're working for, I, I don't respect that. And I, I think all of you need to branch out, do your own recruiting, find your own people. You know, if your company is suffering that bad, then you guys might want to relook at what you're doing as a company and, you know, try to recruit in a different way. Um, you know, some of the recruiting that gets done, uh, I mean, social media, use it. Craigslist, use it. Indeed.com, use it. Jobs.com, use it. You know, uh, well, I'm not going to give uh, some of the ways I've gotten people to come work, but, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things. If you, if you see someone worth their weight in gold, or even silver for that matter, you know, bring them on, show them, show them the ropes, uh, get them interested. I mean, I'm not saying that everyone with that experience should just jump into the security field, but if someone's trainable, train them. If someone is going to put time and effort, then you, you know you've already got yourself a, a a a winning horse in my in my opinion. You know they're gonna give you their best foot forward, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You know. You know, I, I've heard some some strange sayings that, you know, security guards are like walking dead foot draggers and, you know, just a warm body to, you know, fill a fill a position. And, you know, if, if that's the way that things are going for your security company, I, I feel bad for you. I mean, I really do. And, you know, I, that's why I, I look up, you know, on different uh, websites and I see the same security companies hiring and it's like, okay. You guys are hiring, and you guys want to sit there and say you guys are the best, you know, in the city, but you guys go through more guards than we do. And, you know, uh, in my opinion, it's it's one of those things, the reason why why we retain our guards is because of the treatment quality. You know, if, if we didn't treat our guards good, they would leave. And sure, in some cases, people have left, and, and in some cases, we wanted them to leave, you know. Uh, if you're one of those people that are going to make your company look bad, we don't want you here. And so that's that's a large part of, you know, being in this industry is if you're going to make it bad for other people, if you're going to embarrass us, if you're going to make us have to eat crap because of the way that you did your patrol, I don't want you on our team. You know, I wouldn't want you on any any team that I'm on. It doesn't matter where I'm working at. You know, and so w when I'm speaking about this stuff, this is a broad spectrum. I am not talking about the security company that I work for. I'm talking about all security companies across America, across the globe. You know, these are the tips and politics and ethics that everyone should follow. And if you're going to, you know, continue on your career, train yourself, teach yourself, absorb what you can, um, you know, utilize the things that you've been taught and use them in the field and think before you do things and, and know that you're liable for what you do before, during, and after any situation. You have to be smarter than the person that you're dealing with. There is no room for error. Always take pictures and document and do everything you can to cover yourself, um, you know, both legally, professionally, and ethically. You know, uh, and, and for the biggest part is try not to be biased. And I don't mean like by race or religion or anything like that, but, you know, don't be biased about how you handle situations. Be, you know, open-minded about how to approach every situation. You can't just go into it thinking that everything's a routine and this is going to work for this because it worked last time. Okay, you have to be able to adapt, improvise, and overcome all at the same time. It's like breathing. You know, you breathe in the situation and then you breathe out the situation and you have to be able to know what you're going to do, what you're going to say, um, you know, how, how you're going to handle everything from start to finish before you even know what you're really doing. And it gets to that point after a certain while that you're just like, you're just, you're able to do it. You know, I, I know a lot of guys that, you know, they can walk into a situation and boom, 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 boom. And what was going to be a very, you know, crazy possible knockout, drag out, having to call the cops, 
you know, waking people up uh, in the middle of the night to let them know that something bad happened kind of uh, situation turns into a, hey, you know what, thanks for cooperating, appreciate you guys, have a great night, you know, uh, I'm security guard, security guard so-and-so, if you guys ever need anything, give us a call, thank you for complying for whatever reason, you know, and, and so I've seen that happen a number of times where as long as you speak assertively, calmly, clearly, professionally, and you have a good look and you're going to, you know, let people know that you mean business... Um, while showing them a proper amount of respect, even if they're the ones that are doing something wrong, you're going to win nine times out of ten. And it's that one time out of ten situation where, you know, you're just talking to someone and they swing at you or, you know, they verbally assault you or they get crazy or you have to call the police on them or whatever the case is, you know, those are the, those are the times when you got to be open-minded and ready to handle the situation, um that's going to make you look good in front of your employer, your client, and even the person that you're dealing with. Because if you treat them fair and you treat them in an unbiased way, they can't say that you were that bad security guard. They can't, you know, use that stereotype that it was the stupid security guard's fault and if it wasn't for him, I would be doing this, this, and this, or I would have never done this and this and this if it wasn't for this person you know, making me that mad or whatever the case is. And if you're in the security industry, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I think that's it for right now. I'll, I'll definitely have some more security videos coming on, you know, tips, politics, and, and then also the ethics. And so uh, the reason why I touch base on this today is just because I'm, I'm getting sick of the people that continue to try to take away from, you know, what we've worked hard for as, as a group. And so if you are that person that's doing it to other security companies, shame on you, stop doing it. If you uh, can't, you know, create or build a team, you probably shouldn't be in the position that you're in. And I'll just leave it at that. So this is the Z-Man of the Z-Channel. Please like and subscribe. Uh, support as much as you possibly can. I'll be uh, putting my GoFundMe um, link at the bottom of the page. And then also my friend David, um, he's got his Twitch TV kind of a funny uh joke between our group and you know uh <laughs> he's uh he's dressed up as this like comedian cowboy with a mustache for his uh, twitch tv video game streaming that he does and the guy's got some really great dry humor and he just he just can crack some funny jokes and it's a lot of fun to watch if you've got some downtime check out his twitch tv and um uh, that, that's pretty much it so uh z-man signing off have a wonderful day